Good morning. Hi, Karen. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Yes, it's it's sunny again. I'm so Yay. Con- I do like a bit of rain, but it's nice because the light is better in the studio when it's sunny. Wouldn't it be really, really nice if it just rained every night and we woke up to a fresh garden every day? Yeah, fresh grass and everything. Yes, lovely. Yes, absolutely. How have you been? Oh. Anyway, I've seen you've been doing some um, reels on Instagram and showing yourself painting. I did one. Yeah, I did a reel. Yeah, my first real reel. And um, yeah, I, I texted you to find out what I had to do. <laughs> help I don't know what I'm doing yeah so it's good yeah it's, uh, and I think it's it's done its thing I don't know it seems happy to be on Instagram and people are nice so that's fine no it looked good it's a good one for yeah. the first one so well done yeah yes it had to be some David Bowie music on it because obviously <sighs> that's my music I guess I'm of an age well, so am but, I, but I always end up going for the uh, music that hasn't got any vocals on. And I yeah. spend ages trying to find bits of music with no vocals that actually sounds okay. But it's really yeah. tricky. Yeah. yeah, somebody, I watched um, a couple of reels the other day where somebody had put um, quite dramatic classical music over, which normally I would enjoy. But oh my goodness, it was too intense. I just wanted something nice and light so there's a lesson in that for me I think yeah anyway. well that's why it probably takes me ages I can never find anything nice and light and and then yeah. play it and then just you get to the end the voice comes in you think oh, darn it darn yeah damn that you know anyway yeah mm. I've been busy working with you Woo-hoo! yeah I have I mean in as much as I've done lots of base layers, I'm trying to build up texture and base layers on yeah. a group of boards. Uh-huh. So they're nowhere near done. These literally are the base layers, but yeah, I'm kind of getting some layers and texture so that I can go over the top with what I want to feature. Yeah, so how many so, are you at a time? Um, I'm working on five together. Yeah, I don't know why I quite like uneven numbers. Yeah, um, and so yeah, I've got got five of those, and they're they're all similar palettes. Well, they're all the same palette virtually, and um, yeah, and then from there, I'll I'll work out what I'm doing. So, what what sort of boards are you working on? They are actually um, birch, birch. Is that the phrase? Ply. Is it ply? Ply. 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 Ply boards. Yeah. Which come in packs of, let me see. Here we go. I actually have a pack here. Yeah, it's a five millimeter panel that I go for. It, does it say that or is it just ply? It's, it's just ply. Yeah, because it looks darker. Because I'm yeah, I'm, birch is lighter, isn't it? I've got I've ordered yeah. birch. That's where I'm getting confused. Yeah, this is just ply. Yeah, and there's five in that pack. I need that, that's just from Jackson's. Because I I yeah, I didn't know you could get normal ply from Jackson's. I thought you could only get birch ply because all the um, cradled panels, you know, the ones with the wood frame, like yeah, this yes. All of those I found on Jackson's have been birch ply mm. tops. Yeah, a bit lighter, did you say as well? The yeah, it's wise. lighter, this sort of colour. That Yeah, that sort yeah. Of colour. But I have to say, I mean, is it a nice smooth surface or have you got quite a grain? There is a bit of a grain, but it's yeah. not, yeah, it's not too bad at all. Um, but obviously I've um, sealed and then put the gesso on and got yeah. several layers on there before I even started and then none of it's smooth if you can see the texture yeah, yeah. I've got going on in there so yeah so I build the layers so actually the whatever's on the base the, the texture of the actual wood grain is non-existent by the time I get build it up because I work in quite thin layers you know all yeah. my other glazes or layers and I'm working on a, a ply so it's not birch it's just normal ply cradle panel 
Yeah. And luckily, the texture of the panel is contributing to the piece. Oh, that's nice. It's worked really well. So a bit like a canvas, you'd see the weave. Yeah. Sometimes this, you can actually yeah. see the the ply yeah. sort of, um, um, what do you call it? Texture. Yeah. Through. So it was actually sort of coming through in places, which, and it works really well. Quite pleasing. Yeah, it is in that particular yeah. piece. If I was doing something else, I think it would detract. So um, yeah. Just makes you think you need to be really quite careful about what surface you go for. So it's yeah. I mean, you know, traditionally that I would go for um, canvas. Yeah. I, I you know I do love the bounce of canvas when you're working on it, especially with a palette knife or something. I I like that push and the bounce against it. Yeah. Whereas with a panel, it's very much a a solid surface that I'm working with, which is pleasing in a different way. I think yeah. as a phrase. But yeah, I'm used to that bounce and the give. Because I've never really liked the canvas, using canvas no. to bounce. And I always use, um, and I've been using MDF. Um, before I started using ply panels, I was using MDF. So I'd get some MDF. So I'll just show you this bit of MDF. And I yeah. would gesso, I don't seal it, but I gesso mm. it, sort of three coats of gesso. And I'm, I've never had a problem with it. Um, mm. And I've since I've been working on both ply and MDF recently, and the MDF feels smoother to work on. Much smoother, isn't it? There's and no grain it, at all, is there? But it's a different feel for when you drag a palette knife across. Yeah, it's not, weird how you feel the texture through the nut through the knife, isn't it? It's not as scratchy, and I like both, but I just thought, oh, that's. Well, that's different, you know, and I think to actually paint, it's probably good to experiment, really, to see what surface you like. Yeah. I mean, I've just, I dug out, because um, we planned this, didn't we? We planned to talk about this. We did. Who and knew I, we could plan things? I know, I know, sort of made notes and everything. But I, I, um, I, I dug out a few different surfaces I use so that, you know, we could talk about them mm. as things that I would probably still gravitate towards. You know, yeah, I gravitate towards a board, whether it's a ply board or a MDF board. But have you seen these? Mm. Let me see. What am I looking at? It is a, it's like a canvas board. Yes, I have them. But it's like a natural colour. Yeah. So you can get them in, hold on. I know I'm off. You can either get them in natural colour, she says, or in white. Or in white. Do you I got the white? And it was cheaper. It was about half the price to get this one. So the, the white one. Really? But, but I asked, um, and they have been gessoed, but with a clear gesso. All right, so they're pre-prepped. Pre-prepped, but it's a clear gesso rather than... The white gesso. Yeah rather than the white gesso. And I thought, well, I got one just to sort of try out. I mm. might still add a gesso on top. I don't, almost I don't trust it. Because <laughs> it's, it's all in, you know, it doesn't say treated with, you know, when you get the Windsor and Newton one, it's got all the information on it. it says how, yeah. it's, how it's treated. Yeah, because this one says primed 240 GSM, wrapped and glued and compressed and da da da. Yeah. and you know suitable for impasto oil and acrylic so i know that i'm safe i wouldn't go too big with boards because i do think they walk beyond a size so i do I think the cardboard the the yeah the canvas boards i'm talking about um i do like to stick to them relatively small and they're, they're quite nice and not too heavyweight yeah when, um, especially when you frame them you've got the weight of the frame as well yeah yeah exactly you, you know having the having the just a canvas board i've had a, actually a large canvas board warp it was it was just really saddening because it was actually quite a nice painting yeah that's and shame. i just thought i can't do anything with it just no just the way it is i mean i thought no. do you soak it and then repress it almost i thought maybe but then i suppose you'd have the problem again wouldn't you i don't know i don't know 
I mean, a bit mm. like wood, if you soak it and then dry it in a position, it stays there, doesn't it? At the time I didn't, I just sort of thought, I just, you know, marked it up to experience. And yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, the other thing I've been working, um, I, well, I started, I didn't um, start again. <laughs> put <laughs> teeth I, in. Yeah, I put my teeth in, yes, and everything like that. I, there's, I don't know if anybody knows about these places called scrap stores where business, write it down. businesses donate um, materials that they no longer need or are waste products and they donate them to this um, big warehouse where everything's in big drums or boxes and you can go around and pick up odds and ends it could be and it's great for mark making tools and um, bits of mount board and um, great where do you people. find out where they are? Well, well that's really there's there's one in Bristol I know, um, mm. and it's just called Scraps. As far as I'm aware, it's just children's scrap store or something. They have oh, a right, okay. shop attached, um, which I've never used, but you can join as a member, which allows you to go into the the hall and you fill up a trolley of materials, and then they go, oh, is this twenty pounds okay? And you think fine that's fantastic mm -hmm. and you can get fabric and you can get oh wow huge sheets of card you can get it's great for workshop materials um yeah and when i was on a school pta it was great for get, doing things like bunting and um getting hold of um sort of mixing pots or materials for collage and you know basically everything they even have old display units and things it's an, anything and everything from something really small to something massive wow but I picked up a couple of bits of offcuts of um, 18 mil ply, very similar to this sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's thermal <laughs> ply, and I thought, oh, that'd be quite nice. And they were just long, thin ones. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I just painted on there. So I prepped them. I um, you know, did the GAC 100, and then I gessoed. So just the front, I left the sides and the back natural, but, you know, prep, um, prep. Mm -hmm. And then I painted um, a little, you know, little seascape on it and then varnished it afterwards. And it was, I took them along to an event recently and both were snapped up. But not only that, I had a couple of ladies that said, would you be able to do a workshop to show us how to do that? Wow. I know. I know. And so I um, thought, I went, yeah, that's great. I'd love to do a workshop with you, do an acrylic workshop. I said, we could do something on canvas board and I, yeah, I can get some wood. And then I had to think, where do I get hold of these bits of board, you know, these bits of ply? Because mm. these, the bits I had had were scrap and there's no guarantee you're going to find anything in a no. thing. So, um, I mean, I spoke to you the other day, you and Jean the other day about this, didn't I? Yeah. I came across, you know, the wonders of the internet and Google. I came across a company called, and this wouldn't make you think of looking at them, called cutmyplastic.co.uk. Co 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 mm. But I, I didn't, I put in it ply, you know, birch ply or something, and um, it come up on the Google search. And you can go onto this website and you can order any dimension of birch ply that you want whatever thickness and they cut it and they cut I mean I got I wanted to have some little 15 by 15 centimeter ones because I'm going to do like a little series of mini ones um but you could get long ones so if you've got a frame already you can get something cut to size and you can then pop it into the frame and you see that where that's where it comes into my realm because oh, right, yeah. I ordered a frame recently yeah. that was the wrong size for anything I've got. Oh, that is it's a beautiful cool. frame, but I wrote the size down wrong, so it's all on me. So I thought, well, what can I do? And now that you've given me that information, I'm gonna order the ply to fit the frame, which I know is the wrong way around actually it doesn't matter because I know it'll work so um yes that'll be so I've I've actually contacted them already and the, the piece of ply that I'll be getting sometime later this week yeah is going to be spot on 
perfect and my dreams will all come true. Well that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm glad it came in useful. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I felt, yeah. I mean, but what it meant. And very reasonable, I have to say, very well priced. Yeah. I mean, it made it affordable as a piece. I mean, yes. It's comparable with getting like a little box frame, like yeah. a little canvas box frame. <clears throat> yeah. So it's similar so, pricing. I mean, this was about three pounds. Yeah. But um, I thought, oh, that's really, really useful. You know, to actually mm. do that and come across a company, you think, oh, thank goodness, someone yeah. with sensible prices and everything yeah. like that. But the other thing, now you're in acrylics rather than oils, yes. you might be in, have you ever used mount board? Which I suppose, I think in the state they call mat. Is it mat board they call it? Yes, I think it is. Basically the thing you cut an aperture in to frame a pa painting or mat, mm -hmm. mat around a painting. That card that you use, we call mount, oh yeah, we call it mount board. And Does it not walk, Karen? I don't do big. I just do small, a bit like, uh, you know, like ply or canvas board. I just do little ones. So the biggest I get up to is probably A4 size yeah um, and i prep it with gesso a few layers Same. Of gesso, and then i paint and then i varnish and because i work in acrylics i don't need to um glaze it glazer painting yeah. it because it's already protected with all the acrylic Varnishing. paint you can't even get to the cardboard yeah so, and i find that a really nice surface for just doing small quick pieces uh, yeah on and um you see i've never considered it for the, for those of you who haven't followed us before previously i've i've always worked in oils and since i've been uh, since i've done nicholas wilton's cvp 21 um which i could remember the name of a second ago and i it completely escapes, escapes me now well, um, visionary program that one that's the one yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> um yeah, since I've done that, I've been playing more and more with acrylics and actually loving them Ooh. because, I, yeah, but you know, the biggest thing, because I've discovered that I can get the feel of oils while I'm working with them, which for me is that buttery, yeah. thick, heavy texture. Um, and so I'm learning that I can get uh, somewhat of a feel of oils working with them so that I can work and manipulate them the way I want to. Um, but they dry so much quicker. Mm, they do. It makes such been, a difference. Have we been using a medium? Okay. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Allow me to show you, my lady. Here's one under the counter. I have various medium. That looks like but a, I've got very well organised. I know. I do. I do have to keep them in one place, otherwise I'll lose it. So I've got um, a Liquitex gloss medium. Yeah. Which doesn't um thicken it very much but does have some staying power for, for me anyway that's what i'm that extends it a bit, doesn't it yeah, yeah yeah so it'll give it some staying power um and then i've got the modeling paste which is my favorite i love it and yeah. this looks like i know look 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 i'm look, leaving oh, point oh. to have a look so you have to hold it up hold on it's all a bit sticky. I haven't got my pinny on, so I can't really. This is where I, it Do proves to you. I go at that pin. normally. So if I show you that. All oh, right, yeah. And do, if I can find something to do it with. If you see it on a, an old brush, you can oh, see it's right. quite gloopy. Yeah, yeah. That looks good. Lovely and gloopy. Look, it sticks. Yeah. And so that makes it really quite rich and buttery and it's almost gloomy. Yeah, I mean, which is, oh, I love that texture. So, and it doesn't take very much. You can see I've, I've done quite a few different um, bits and pieces and it's, I've used hardly any. I've got this one, which is a heavy structure gel, um, which does similar to that one, but it's just a bit thicker. Yeah. So it'll okay. give you, it'll give it a bit more solidity. So yeah. the, the, um, the paint isn't quite as runny. And then I've got the modeling paste, which I Thing. might be similar to that one but it's um, a Winsor and Newton so this one's a flexible it's a lightweight one so while it's similar to that it's a bit more gluey let me use that same so you can see so it's a bit more it's sort of in between, I... isn't it it's sort of almost in between your yeah Next it's one. between the two yeah this one's lighter that one's definitely kind of you know that's thick semolina whereas this is you know <laughs> 
yeah <laughs> talk in terms of food um that, that one's more buttery if you like 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 loose butter so it's great fun and i have got a bit more here hang fire do you can i just ask with these yes. modeling paste can you add water to them to thin them you can yeah. um but i think i would personally well yeah you can not it's not really my style so i can't say that i've experimented okay. that much on that sort of things right. so that side of things but you can and then there's the soft gel one which again is somewhere between the liquid and the light so it's kind of um let's do the same one so this is very much this look, looks like kind of thicker paint yeah okay with the, with the um the shaky gel you've got at the front, the Galleria one, the yellow yeah. lid. Mine has got a more translucent look to it than the ones you've got out. Mine mine looks slightly more um yeah, trans clear. clear, yeah. These I mean these do dry clear. It looks it's kind of well you can if I pull it, this no, is I'm like think, I'm thinking about a different pot. Mine is actually white as well. <laughs> if I peel that off, you can sit off the edge where I've spilt it. Yeah. You can see it dries like glue. It's just yeah. kind of gluey. It's like that kid's glue, isn't it? Effectively. Yeah. Um, but it does. Name you don't need much pigment, do you, when you're using that? No, no, not at all. And it's quite nice. I mean, I thought initially when I started, sorry, I'm just going to put these back because otherwise they'll. Yeah. I thought initially when I started using them that they'd um, affect the pigment, but they don't really. Yeah. You know, they, they just mix in and just give body. So it's literally the body I'm looking for. It does, and it also it bolts out paint, doesn't it? it yes, it does. Out. Yeah. But it doesn't take very much at all. So that's been really good fun playing with that I, I well you can see I've dabbled with all of it because I, I tend to use I've been using a um a matte medium mm. I've been using the, this one yeah um that's nice and that I like really, golden it's really liquidy um yeah and I've been using that to make the glazes when I'm doing glazing over work uh, so how would you mix that how how I, loose would you do it would you literally have a dab of the pigment in or would you no I've probably been doing about 50 50 yeah probably and then sometimes if I'm working with neat paint on the canvas and I want it to move a bit further I just take dip my brush into a, a bit and of that spread it and so. then mix it in to just give it a bit more um, yeah. particularly if I want it to be more translucent but it is a different feel and I, I'm mm, usually yes. using water. Um, and so it's- So how would you mix acrylics? Because I don't use water with the acrylic you have very to much. Learn with, you have to learn with acrylic how far you can take it with water because it will split out. It's sort of plastic, it goes into bits all plasticized and oh, that's the wrong word, but all, because it's a plastic um, compound, I suppose. Yeah. Mixing water, it's not, it's not a natural mix, it separate. It separates. So you get to the point where it will split and you end up with lumps. And so you mm. basically ruin that bit of paint. So yeah. I, you can use quite a lot of, I find you can use quite a lot of water without it splitting, but it is experience that is, just trying yeah. it out and seeing yeah. how far it goes. And it does matter when, um, how long you've had it on the palette as well. If it starts to dry and then you yeah. put water on it, it will split out quicker. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, interesting. Because that's the other thing I've found with the medium. Mm -hmm. It definitely sits that little bit longer in a state that I can use it. Yeah. So that definitely helps. Do you ever spray, I'll show you my old, this is like an old um, old bottle I just filled with um, mm, I do. the Flow Improver. So I've got this. So do you actually buy like something yeah. called Flow Improver? Yeah, look, there, that. This, I've got a Windsor and, this is oh, a yes, yes, yes. Windsor and Newton Flow Improver. Can I've anybody been, see where I put my pencil? Is it behind your ear or something like that? That is usually where it goes or in my hair, but anyway. Luckily I have a spur. Okay. I so I'm, gonna, I'm just writing these down. So Flow Improver. And what... And so then tell I'll, me what that does. 
Well, it basically, it, it helps it stop drying out in a way and it helps it move across a canvas. So I've just bought a big bot new bottle from Jackson's. Mm. Um, not tried it yet because I haven't finished the old one. And I don't, I have to, I'll have to read the Jackson's instructions because I tend to dilute things down sort of one to 10. So nine parts water, one part um, flow improver because I find it moves too fast. If you put it on neat, it, I find it's too much. Whereas if you're used to things moving around like in oils, you might find a stronger solution would work better. So yeah. I don't know, it's just all these things that you don't try. I am tempted to just get one of these um, mixed, you know, you get these mixed sample packs. You get every different type of medium. You can get yeah. Formulated ones. Um, I might have like a day of, you know, if I get hold of one of those, I could have a day of trying out all the mediums and seeing what they do. Sounds like a project, doesn't it? Like a su summer. Yeah, it sounds like quite a fun project that we enjoy. I've always just sort of, I've not, you know, really spent the time investigating all these things, and you mm. know, you just end up painting and you know, experimenting as you go along, and it might be useful to have a body of you know, experimental yeah. pieces just to sort of try it. Absolutely. There's so much out there. Yeah. You wouldn't know where to start, Absolutely. really. No. So while we're talking about the way we work with our paints, yeah. uh, specifically acrylic we're talking about today, um, you have, you do the same as me because you showed me this way, or at least I watched you demonstrate this in a workshop and stole it. Oh, right. Um, okay. <laughs> and then I have since discovered that all the best acrylic people do it. All right. Apparently, what, what do I do? is that. <laughs> oh, it's a bit dirty, so I apologise. But you take one tray. And oh, this yeah. is like Blue Peter style. Then you have a roll of paper, which I happen to have here. You'll be impressed. So I've got an ergonomic stool, so sometimes I have to watch where I'm sitting. Um, and you layer that on to make it nice and thick. You use blue roll paper? I just, I'm not saying blue roll, I'm saying blue as in the color. I just use whatever I've got to hand, but I do yeah. several thicknesses of it. Yeah. So you, if you saw the one that I've been working on, uh, that's like underneath you at the moment, yeah. there's about four or five layers of, of this. And I, I tend to work with a couple of palettes now because I've realized that I don't like colors mixing too much. I like my cools and my, my warm separate. But I know, but that's an old oil tradition yeah. that I kind of can't quite let go of. And then, da, 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 da. I have grease proof paper. Da, da, da. So you make this bit wet. Yes. Wet over the top, yes. And then place that over the top. So it's a stay wet palette, yes? Yeah. And afterwards, I put something, if I'm leaving it and I notice. I'm saying this because I forgot I was washing brushes and I was rushing around yesterday I forgot I have a piece of plastic I just put over the top if I'm leaving it overnight and I forgot so you've I, got little lumps of I've beautiful probably, color I've probably wrecked my palette so everything's just dried out it was quite old anyway it was an old palette anyway I was mm. making it last you know a bit longer yeah a few things but the one thing with the Stay Wet palette is that not to make it too wet. Yeah. Because otherwise the paints, because the water goes through the greaseproof paper and the paints mm. become too liquid. But I don't tend to, I mean, I have been, I have been recently, I have been uh, mixing on my palette because I've been using brushes. Brushes, me using brushes, I know. Um, you see, we're all getting into all this new uh, stuff, new fangled I've ways. I'm finding, if I'm, Using a palette knife, I find it really tricky on the grease with paper. I haven't got enough room to really and okay. dig in with a palette knife. Um, so I use a, a glass sheet of glass as a palette. Yeah, I've actually got one at the back. And what yes. I've my palette, sorry, I will lift it and bring it forward so you can see it. I've painted it grey underneath. Actually, I can't even lift it, but I do have a smaller one that's, here. That's a good idea. I've just got a bit of white paper underneath mine. 
now I've got grey. It's actually painted grey because the colours stay truer. Oh, really? Yeah, for me, I can see the colour sitting on it, especially yeah. when you're working with oils. But I've got a large one there, which actually I got from, I got a plain piece of glass from Ikea. Yeah. Um, which was about three quid, I think. And then um, painted it grey underneath. So literally oh. spray paint. And it, it sits really nicely. I might do a test and put a grey piece of paper underneath. Because I've got an old double glazed unit from an old window. I just saw that on Instagram. Took the frame off and yeah. just use just use that as a palette. I have it at one across one end of my table. I use that for doing like mono printing and everything now. So just, it's just nice. there. Because when I saw you printing on it yesterday, actually. Yes. I was yes, I was just had all the pop, poppies outside, and I thought, oh, I wonder if they'll print. They weren't. It wasn't as successful as I'd hoped, but it was good doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Sometimes it's fun to see, and you learn from the stuff that isn't successful just as much as you do from the stuff that is. Yeah, don't you? you do. So, can I then ask? Yeah. Water. How do you do your waters? Do you I, just have a, because do you put your brush in water so it gets wet? I have loads and loads of these yoghurt. Yeah, like the whole earth. Yeah, and I have similar. lots of, I have, I have, they end up being different grades of clean. clean. So I try and keep a clean. Yeah. But what I do is I'm always holding a piece of rag or mm. tissue or something. And before yeah. I put a brush in, if it's got paint on it, before I put it in the water, I'll try and wipe you take the most of it off. Yeah, and you know, then wash it out in the water. Because I'm just trying to reduce the amount of, I suppose, plastic in the water because it's going to go into mm. the environment, isn't it, somewhere? I've tried mm. um, separating it out and it does work to a degree, but my goodness me, it stinks when you open the, you open the yeah. bottle had several bottles of it and I opened the bottle and it you know where I've been le not great settled not a great smell not something no. for this you know to do inside a studio I wouldn't open them in the studio again it took ages to for the smell to just disappear yeah because oh it was so, but it, it can be strong can't it you know you see that's the smell I remember we had a conversation about acrylics way back when probably 12 months ago or maybe you know just less slightly yeah. Well, we talked about acrylic paint and I said to you, it reminds me of school rooms. Right. I don't even remember that conversation. Hard. And it does. The smell of acrylic paint sends me back, which, you know, is good yeah. and bad. The smell I find quite strong, but, and that's the smell of not cleared away properly acrylic paint as opposed to working with acrylic paint. Yeah, no, normal acrylic paint does not smell like that. I mean, this no. smelt rank yeah really so rank that's really. the smell that rank kind of festering yeah. nastiness yeah. yeah don't do that people anybody listening don't leave it because ew yeah. and what I do to get rid of mine um is I've got like a patch of gravel behind which it's probably still not environmentally friendly but I keep thinking well it's not going into a river um I don't put it down the sink I've got a patch of sand and gravel kind of behind just behind the studio between me and a fence and I tend to put it there so that I can you know if it then clusters I can dig it and yeah you know separate it a bit because it isn't you know yeah you there's no ideal way to get rid of waste no. you know from paint apparently yeah I mean it, whatever you use is going to be pros and cons mm. and um, it would be lovely if a company came up with an environmentally friendly acrylic oh it would be fabulous wouldn't it fantastic so, I mean, at the moment I'm using acrylic and I'm just doing best practice in terms of making sure I avoid having much in the water. Yeah, me too. There is, ultimately there is some, and you know, that's you just can't avoid it. you have to do. And I just- But um, it does settle to the bottom and you can, to a certain extent, tip some of the clearer water away. Yeah, and you can, um, apparently there are additives you can add to speed up that sort of, um, what you call it separation um, in the in the water you know, the paint out of the water um, yeah. but then you've got that chemical in the water so you think it's pretty good so I mm. think it's just I'm just going to sort of keep sort of having it 
the, the, the dirtier water to settle out and just minimize mm. what I put down the drain. And that's all I can do at the moment. I yeah. And then just be as green as possible in all other aspects of my life. <laughs> and just, you know, swings and roundabouts and having a balance. There is, I mean, there that's... Is, I was going to say Sorry. there was a program, uh, not a program, a podcast um, that Art Juice did. Wasn't yes. it? And I can't remember the number of it, but it, it was art juice yeah art juice and it was about this i think australian or new zealand artist that had written a book about actually yes i do in fact i'll put the link in i can't remember what it was but it, i'll have a little look through because he was really interesting um and there's certainly some simple things yeah. and everybody can do yeah and i think in australia there was a company that had some environmentally friendly paints acrylic paints which if they you couldn't get them here in not, the UK. It's not affordable, is it, to ship them from Australia? No. no. Yeah. And then it's not environmentally friendly anyway. You've got all the chicken. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Oh, and again, it's difficult. Come back again. Does that call from your mum? <laughs> no, I actually just had a, a text message come up on the screen. I couldn't see you, so I was kind of flipping it and... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm. I mean, the one thing I'd say about the artist community is most do care about the planet and the environment and everything else. So do that, you know, most people I've met really try hard to minimize any potential harm to the earth. So fingers crossed, long may that continue. And sometimes, I mean, it's, it's sometimes you just using stuff that's around and I think if you're reusing material, it's, and it's a bit like um, if you've got old canvases that are not going anywhere, you reuse. It's a bit like this. What is it? Three R's: reuse, repurpose, or something. Repurpose or recycle. Before yeah. you recycle. If, oh, anyway, whatever those three R's are. <laughs> I'll do the research and find out what they are. <laughs> find out what they are and put them in the link. But you know what I mean. You, yeah, you reuse some. You reuse. reuse, recycle, repurpose. Or I don't know, it might be that. Or you don't recycle it until right at the end. So recycle might be at the end, but you uh, making sure that it's totally used. So if you write on a piece of paper. Use and use and use. Use the back of the piece of paper. And then yeah. maybe with the paper you could, um, I don't know, compost it or something. Or, you know, it's all, mm. it's all things like that. Anyway, I can't remember what the name is. And I always mix my... Mix my, um, I can't even think what they're called, metaphors or whatever now, or <laughs> <laughs> I'm rubbish at that. <laughs> well, you're doing all right explaining it, but we'll have a look. But yes, uh, we get, I get your point, and that's yeah. um, it's always worth remembering. Yeah. So, is there anything else about acrylics? I, I, I think there's a whole world of acrylic um, doodars as well. These inks. Oh, acrylic inks. Which is a whole different conversation, I think. Yeah, it's not paints, is it? But the one no. thing about acrylic paint, and if anybody has, and if anybody could tell me, is there anything that washes it out of clothes? Because the the amount I have on clothes is ridiculous. Let me know. Yeah, I'd love to, you know, especially if it's been around a while, mm. it would be really nice to actually... Yeah. I mean, I end up wearing the same I've got a studio jumper that I end up wearing because yeah. it's a point in life which I love it, but it is only only presentable for the only studio. fit for studios. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got a jumper like that as well. Mm. I still love it, and it's you know, but it's it's things like that would be really useful to to know about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't know if anybody has the answer to that one. So yeah, please let us know. We'd love it. Yes. Okay. So finally, then let's round it up. What are you up to this week? In the rest of the week. Well, I'm finishing off um, a couple of commissions. Well, finishing one, and then mm. I'm doing. I've got another one to start, so that's good. Going you know, to have another one on the go. Yeah. Finishing off some work. Prep, starting to prep work actually for the um, our exhibition in September. Yeah. It's yeah. To think, okay, you know, because you know, there's a body of work that I want to show, 
and it links into all the collage work that I did. And so I'm just starting to sort of see how it's been. It and I thought that'd be the 44 AD one in Bath would be a really good, good show to, you know, to show all that really, to exhibit. Yeah. Um, and then it would be just, that'd be great. But I'm um, just thinking I've got, you know, other meetings to do with art groups, local art groups. Yep. Whole day tomorrow, a strategic away day tomorrow with the Cam Sounds very important. Cam Valley Arts Trail Group, which I set up back in 2013. So um, that would be actually really good because we're just sort of getting a grip of where we are and where we want to go now. So that's a really lovely um, local group. And um, so if you're in the area, around the Bath area, sort of. Um, it could be Bath or Bristol, really. Bath or Bristol, it is between those areas. That's that's where we are. Mm. Um, oh, and I've got a workshop on Saturday with a student. excellent. So I'll be prepping for that, just getting ready, everything ready for that. So, That'll be lovely, and that's going to be nice because that's all sort of preparing collage materials, and using print and uh, mark making, and then doing an actual collage, landscape collage. So that I'm really looking forward to that one because that's with mm. children, actually. So that'll be a bit different to my normal thing at the moment. So that'll be, what about you? What are you up to? I think that'll be really good fun. What I'm up to is, well, I'm doing these, I've prepped these five boards because I want to experiment on them. I've got things I want to paint and I want to see how they sit on top of textured um, boards. Yeah. As well as smooth. I've got some work I want to do on heavy uh, fabric geo papers. Did I say it right? Mm. Fabric, fabric, hold on. In my thing. Anyway, some very, very nice expensive paper mm -hmm. that I want to do some um, smaller work on those. And then yes, I too, because a, a commission went last week, which was lovely. Right. Um, yeah. Was delivered, yeah. And the clients were happy. So that was really, in fact, really happy, which is really, really nice when that happens. Yeah. Yeah, just, um, you know, all those nerves you go through, it doesn't matter, you know, that you're following a brief. It's always a relief when they say, oh, actually, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So it's yeah. You want, it's because you want to do it well for them and you care so yeah. much. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the thing. So yeah, that was nice. So that's gone now. And it means that my time is free to plan for our exhibition, which we're going to be calling Take Two, I think. And the good thing, good. on that note, the good thing is yeah. that my, my brother is a bit of a graphic design whiz. That's his profession. Yeah. And I was having problems doing something on the poster to do with photos. Yeah. And he rang up, I rang up, rang him up and I said, can you just tell me what I'm supposed to do? And he said, oh, it's a quicker way. Yeah, just do this, this, this. I, oh, fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> that is good news. Yeah. You see, so somebody always has the answer. I know. And, and the amount of time I'd wasted following YouTube tutorials, trying to figure it's it crazy. out. And all I need to do is ring my brother up. There you go. Brothers are sometimes the answer to everything. Yeah family eh? Usually, yeah yeah let them absolutely help where they can which is good they can be very useful mm. yeah so on that news we've on that note we've got news that soon you won't just be able to look at us you'll be able to listen to us in your ears in your ears so um yeah so watch this space yes. um we might have news all soon all exciting yes plans in the making but there you go yes yes all right, my darling. Well, you have a wonderful week. Enjoy the workshop. And you. I'm sure and I'll see you. Time. Yeah, I'll see you this time next week. Okay, take care. See you then. Lots of love. Bye.